Okay, so continuing the digital inking in PhotoP, um, we've had some time to try it on your own now. Using the brush tool with just a trackpad or just a mouse, something other than a stylus and tablet, is a little bit more work than traditional inking would be, mostly because as you press down, it will only give you one consistent line weight. But I wanted everyone to get to try it because sometimes you want really clear consistency in your line weights. It's why a lot of digital inkers, depending on, on the subject matter, will choose to use like a locked weight for their brush. Just like how traditional inkers might use a technical pen with a certain locked width rather than a calligraphy print pen or brush pen for their ink work. Now in my own taste, I tend to use a brush pen more. I like tapered edges. So there's a little bit extra work into doing that without using a tablet, which is pressure sensitive, that I have to kind of cut down the edges of my lines. And I just do that with the lasso tool. Just shape them a little bit, often zoom in, and taper them down to what you want. Even if it's really subtle, it can make a big difference in refining the line work. The other nice thing about inking digitally is not only do you have that smooth tool with photo P and the brush, but you have an unlimited amount of variation in line weight, right? So if I'm doing just a little bit of inking for texture on the inside of the eye socket here. I can use a really small brush and imitate stippling, which is breaking up with lots of dots, an area. Or I can go a little bit thicker And I can do what's called hatching, do linear hatching. And build kind of a gray value with how close these lines are to each other. Extending from an existing line, it's called feathering. And I can just basically get a lot of different effects to give more variety and texture to my inking, instead of it just being all outline. Of course, your computer has to keep up with you. And if you find that it's just really lagging behind, then you might have to take it down to screen resolution, just because of the limitations of your device. Okay, so the goal was to give you guys half an hour just working on a digital inking solution. Those of you that didn't have sketches yet, playing with digital inking can help inform you of how ambitious to get with the line art for your idea, right? And then those of you who have programs like Photoshop that have hardware like a tablet with pressure sensitivity, I want to show you some of the other ways you can go about doing this. And then what I would do professionally with all the equipment that is available out there, how I do my professional spot illustrations. But just really quickly, I'll continue to texture this a little. Because this is going to give a unique quality to this type of digital inking. So whatever choice you make, there's always kind of differences in the amount of control you have.
And a great advantage of digital as opposed to traditional linking, of course, is that I can always just hit Command Z. I can always use my lasso and erase. And you notice I'm not going to use the eraser tool too much. You can use the eraser tool the same way you use your brush. You can even put a smooth on it. So if that's useful to you, it just seems to, to lag. And lagging for the brush is fine, but lagging for the eraser can be really annoying. So that's why I often just use the lasso instead. It seems to be a little bit more direct. OK, so I'm liking that inking so far. So I'm going to save that work and then show you some other ways. Some that are faster, some that aren't. But whenever you go for faster, you're going to lose some control. Right? And some that just use uh, hardware and technology that I think is very helpful. Okay, so the first, I'm going to turn off my screen sharing and turn on my video. So you can see the tablet I'm using. It's the one that's uh, recommended in our course supplies if you want to match what we use traditionally in the lab. It's just a small a $60 or so Wacom Intuos tablet. It's not wireless, so I don't have to pay for batteries all the time. And I like it because it's portable. I can use it with my laptop, switch it to desktop units, and it's not that expensive. And the big advantage is this stylus, which becomes your mouse point, and its pressure sensitivity. Come on. So it does work in Photopea. So let's show you off to the side here. If I pick a bigger brush and I set it to be pressure sensitive, you can see that in the tool settings up at the top. This is a little different than Photoshop, but we'll get into more of these options when we do digital painting. There we go. So you can see there, that's a pressure sensitivity for size. So when I press lightly, come on, <laughs> it'll be really thin. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer, that's why. Oh, I'm on the eraser, that's why, okay. So if I press lightly, it won't fill up the whole circle. Make sure it's on. It'll just fill up a little bit of the circle. Ooh, and then if I press harder, it'll fill up more of it. So I can get that pressure sensitivity, but it requires a tablet. And actually this is flowing pretty well. And so maybe I'll, I'll just draw a few teeth with it. And it allows me to go a little bit thicker with my brush because I'm not going to be using it at full size all the time. But what happens to me is I want the, uh, the tablet always to, to respond a little bit faster than it does when it's on a browser-based program like Photopea. And so I get kind of frustrated with it and just go back to the trackpad. The, uh, the smoothness setting also seems to fight styluses a lot. Yeah, the smoothness setting is is kind of um, working on your processing with each stroke, right? So that is going to slow things down. But I think it's, it's advantageous as well. But you can see how the stippling, when I use it with the tablet, is going to have a lot more variety <laughs> than it does when you're using it at a fixed size. So just little things. Okay, now let me show you my preferred way of doing this professionally. If I have a tablet and 
I'm lucky enough to have a vector program like Illustrator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open my sketch in Illustrator. Again, you are not required to have Illustrator. This is just for those of you who want to play around with it. So my sketch, of course, is pixel-based. So when we open it up in Illustrator, it's like opening up our sketch in the vector program, and it just becomes a template that we can draw vectors on top of. And it's just like digitally inking in PhotoP or in Photoshop where we onion skin it, except this time we can just click on it. Hmm, what happened? No. Uh -oh. So we can hopefully run Illustrator. It seems to be fighting me a little bit, I guess, with all the video programs running. And we can uh, dim it to 50%. So this is called onion skinning. This is in Illustrator. It automatically dims it to 50%. I can lock it, make a new layer on top of it. Bring this in so you guys can see it. And now this is going to be my ink, my line art layer. It's identical skills. Okay, now, instead of using the brush tool or the pencil tool, you know, which would make our usual vector shapes, I'm going to use this tool that's in Illustrator, but not in uh, the vector online program. It's called the blob brush. I'm going to double click on the blob brush, and I'm going to look at the different options. So. I want the size to actually be a pressure sensitive size because I'm using a tablet. That's not an option if you don't have a tablet. And, it, if, and if I don't have a tablet, this is pretty much exactly like the brush tool with smoothing in PhotoP, except that it's making a vector for you. I'm going to make the size pretty large. And then I want to set the variation to be the full variation on the size. That means it can be everything from one point in size to 54 points, which is like pixels, but it's in points because that's a vector measurement. And then I can set how accurate I want it to be versus how smooth I want it to be. So I'm going to try, I don't get to do the full percentages, but I'm going to try it at like 33% smooth. So I can see immediately that my brush is too big. And then I need to set it to be not white, but a different color. So I want it to be that solid black. So then I double click and I'm going to make that more like 24 point. Okay. And then you can see as I draw, it's very sensitive, but then when I let go, it's going to render it more smoothly. And because this isn't browser based, instead, this is software you know downloaded onto my computer that i pay for it can use the processing more effectively than a web browser can so because my brush is kind of too small there i'm going to grow my image to fill the artboard so this is like an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper and then lock it again and now i can use the bigger blob brush to do my digital inking. And this is one of the tools that's most kind of underutilized. In Illustrator, so it's a really good one to play around with should you have that program. All right, let me see. But of course, Illustrator has its little glitches. It's glitching on me right now. <laughs> and so I am confused by it. I might have to set it up again. <laughs> 